So hi everyone. Uh, in this video, we're going to be dealing with short run costs and short run costs exists, uh, as the name implies, uh, when the production time frame for a firm is in the short run. So at the beginning part of our lectures on the theory of the firm, we, uh, we distinguish between the production time frames that are possible. So a firm may find itself first in the short run time frame, and it may also find itself in the long run time frame. And as we've said, there is a distinguishing factor between short run and long run production. So it would be rational to believe that there's also a distinction between short run and long run costs. Uh, so in this video, we're going to zero in on short run costs in particular. So in the short run, okay, what we know is that economic actors okay, have only limited flexibility in their actions. What does that mean? It means that there are some actions that, um, that firms make okay, that, uh, that they would have otherwise wanted a different action, but they couldn't do that action because the time frame is too short. What do I mean by this? Well, there could be some uh, inputs in their production that they would want to adjust. Say, for example, capital and labor, they would want to adjust the ratio of capital and labor, but then they can't because one of the inputs is fixed, right? Because you can't readily adjust an input in production so quickly in the short run. So the way that we introduce that friction between short run and long run is that we assume that one input in production is uh, fixed in that um, in most textbooks, we assume that the capital input K is held constant at a level K naught. But the firm is free to vary some input. So what does that mean? It, there are, of course, inputs that the firm can vary readily, that, can it, that it can adjust instantaneously over time. But there are also inputs that are fixed in the short run, definitely, because the firm doesn't have much leeway to adjust those inputs. And in this case, in our two good production function, our two input production function, uh, if capital input is held constant, uh, our production function becomes a function of labor and some fixed level of capital K naught. Okay, now uh, the pro uh, we know that this is now the production function. So what we can do is we can try now to visualize how its cost function would look like. So the short run total cost function is essentially equal to WL plus R K naught. Right, so wherein K naught of course is fixed. Now, inside the short run total cost, there are two types of costs. Now, because again, in the short run, we have fixed inputs, so there are two types of costs. The first of which is called short run fixed costs, and these are costs associated with fixed inputs. So, in this case, okay, our input that is fixed is our K naught, so this portion of the cost here. This is your short run. This is the short run fixed cost. And you also have, okay, again, not all inputs are fixed. There are still some inputs that are variable. So you have costs associated with variable inputs, okay? And these are these here because labor can vary. So these are your short run, okay, short run variable costs. Okay, now. Uh, before we continue, okay, you must know that first, okay, short run costs are not minimal costs for producing the various output levels. What do I mean by this? Uh, sometimes, okay, these short run costs aren't strictly speaking the the minimum cost that you would incur after your cost minimization process, and the reason why they're not the minimum cost is because for one the firm does not have the flexibility of input choice. What does that mean? It has to take, for instance, in this case, it has to take capital as given. Since capital is fixed, it cannot change readily. Okay. Second, to vary its output in the short run, the firm must use non-optimal input combinations. What does that mean? It has to only reallocate. Okay. In our case of a two good, in, in our two, two input production case, it can only vary labor. It can't vary capital, so it's taking capital as given. So as much as the input combination would want to be this level of capital and this level of labor, you can't do that because capital is fixed. 
And this suggests that the marginal rate of technical substitution may not, or more often will not, okay, be equal to the ratio of the input prices, which is our first order condition for cost minimization. So since capital is fixed to K0, the firm cannot equate MRT as LK with the ratio of the input price. So let's show that in a graph. Okay. So visualize here, we have three ISO cost uh, lines that C, uh, we have here um, C1, C2, and C3. Three ISO cost lines and then three ISO quants. If you notice, okay, at the first ISO quant, okay, we should be producing at a point where an MRTS LK or the negative of the slope of the isoquant should be equal to the input ratio. But in this case, look, we're employing K0, K, because we have no control over that, and employing L1. But notice the slope of the isoquant is here, and the slope of the budget, uh, I'm sorry, the isocost is here. They're not in an optimal state, okay, because there it is possible, okay, that. The input combination use is suboptimal because, again, an input is fixed in production. So these are situations that could occur in the short run because the firm has no control over these inputs. But in the long run, of course, since it can vary the inputs constantly, as in all inputs are variable, this is not going to be the case. Okay, So this is a graphical representation as to why, okay, as to why uh, the firm may not be able to attain its optimal Okay, uh, it's minimum cost or satisfy the first order conditions for a minimum cost. Similarly to our previous cost functions, we also have the marginal and the average cost and computing for them in the short run is straightforward. So our short run marginal cost is the first order partial derivative of the short run cost function with respect to Q. Okay, And we also have a short run average cost, which is this one, which is your total um, short-run cost divided by Q. So uh, in the next video, we're going to combine all of these concepts together and derive the relationship between the short-run 